what's up my Carcomaniacs out there? This is your South American Extreme Champion from Wrestling Alliance Revolution or WAR if you will. Carcamo, the Forger of Pain. And welcome back to Carcamo Gaming. <clears throat> Today is a sad, truly sadly sad 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 day because by the time you're watching this probably this game is no longer available I'm of course referring to Super Mario 35 or Command Guy uh, as we call it but because by the end of the day that's what it is Mario Royale but uh, before starting this review a little history Mario Royale was conceived in 2019 by a hacker named Inferno Plus. It was an online browser game where you and 74 other players were to duke it out to see who made it first to the end of Bowser's Castle, aka level 1-4. All the Super Mario Bros. mechanics were untouched. The big difference was you were accompanied by lots and lots of Mario clones. It can be a little overwhelming at first, as there was a lot of Mario sprites on the screen. Inferno Plus tackled this by making the other as ghost players, with a lower opacity than your character. The fun part was that the power-ups and enemies remained the same, and that means only one mushroom, only one power star, and if you missed it, well, good luck I guess. If you got a power star, you could run over everyone GTA style and kill every other Mario's you touch. Same with the Koopa Troopas and well, you get the picture. The game was pretty hectic and fun as hell. And trust me, not even all your veteran platforming any skills could save you. I mean, yeah, but you had to be lucky too. The sad part is the internet didn't even get to enjoy the game that much and Inferno Plus, even to this day, he doesn't get the recognition he deserves. Everyone and their grandmas has talked about the weird marketing and stupid sales practices about Nintendo and it's like an unsolvable puzzle and you might or might not heard what I'm about to say in the interwebs. But anyway, here's my take. And in an unsurprising turn of events, two weeks into Mario Royale's launch, Nintendo summoned their DMCA takedown and the game was pulled off out of the way. As you can tell, the original developer, I mean he knew, he knew it was coming, he knew he was gonna get scolded by our favorite grumpy old grandpa Miyamoto-san. Okay, it wasn't directly Miyamoto, it was Nintendo, but what I'm trying to say, that's Nintendo's modus operandi. Uh, I mean, it wasn't the first time they do something like this, and trust me when I say it won't be the last. Don't even make me open that Pandora's box. Nintendo has been doing this since forever. Uh, I know, legally, they're in the right to do it, but it makes them look so insecure. Every single solitary time things like this are addressed to Nintendo, they just ignore it. They just brush it off, even though this may generate bad publicity for the company. Uh, Bad publicity is good publicity, I guess? Awesome fan games from people who are filled with passion and love for Nintendo games have been taken down again and again and again and again! People who have spent days, weeks, and sometimes even years just to be stricken from the records as God Nintendo pleases.
I gotta admit, their unpopular policies towards fan games is pretty selective. You can still find online a bajillion, a ton of Mario ROM hacks and Nintendo characters in other games. Especially, in case you don't know, I am a Mugen enthusiast. And their characters, their IPs are, you know, they're all in those fighting games. But I think, now, I mean, don't quote me on this one. I think Nintendo acts this way when they see their future threatened by this, you know, fan games. Come on, give me a break, man. Help a guy out, will ya? But anyway, this is a discussion. We could, we could be all day talking about this, but that's not why we're here. So let's move on. We arrive at September 2020 and Nintendo announces Super Mario 35! So this game is not an exact carbon copy of Inferno Plus Mario Royale, but maybe they didn't want a similar game competing with their game, so maybe that's the reason behind all of this? To Nintendo's little credit, there are little to no similarities with the web grasser game, other than it's Super Mario Brothers. But instead of playing the first four levels, it's the entire game. The other main difference is that rather than a game of speed, this is a game of resistance with 35 online players because, well, of the 35 anniversary gimmick. You lazy bastard. Instead of, you know, 75 or 99 players, um, oh well, what you gonna do? Progress through the game. If you kill enemies such as Goombas, Koopa Troopas, such and such and such, the enemies you defeated will land on the other players and vice versa. You can tell which enemies are not in the vanilla Super Mario Bros. game because of their bluish grayish color palette or maybe because why in the blue hell is Bowser here? Hola, vengo a flotar. If you know the original Mario game by heart, you'll notice immediately that that particular enemy doesn't belong in the level. Not because it's bluish. Come on, Nintendo. Don't insult my intelligence. Anyway, you have a timer that can rack up a time by defeating enemies. If you defeat them by stomping them in a succession, you gain more time. Or if you have a Koopa shell, use it at your advantage. You can combo them into oblivion, gaining sweet, precious time. Same goes if you have a star. Each time you place of whatever, you gain sprites or avatars if you will, and you unlock more Mario levels goodness. If you want to start on a ladder level, you know, to add variety to the game. A new mechanic this game implements is that you can choose with the right analog stick who'll get the enemies you defeat, and this adds a level of strategy to the game. Money, dinero, some buckaroos. This is important as, well, you know, you have to get as much gold as possible. Just like in Mario Kart, you'll notice a question mark block on the top right corner. For every 20 coins, you use it to gain a random power-up. And when the game gets more hectic and you're running out of time, this can be a godsend. Regalo de Dios. In order to survive this Mario madness, you need time and money. Just like in real life. Go figure. Later in the game, the timer goes red. Here is where the real fun begins. A second will last maybe half a second, and the numbers just start going down real fast. But your stress levels start to rise. Here is where you have to beat the clock by gaining time, defeating enemies, avoiding hazards. You can't play it safe here. Well, I mean, maybe you can if you can spare the time, but sometimes that doesn't work. 
Special and I one can't one stress this one. enough. It's not about who gets oh, first to the end. Because there is no ending until you or all your opponents are dead. Whichever happens first. <laughs> And if this is not enough, sometimes the game gets so fed up with you, so mad and so tired that nobody wants to die and starts sending a ridiculous amount of crap at you. <laughs> I say things I'm not supposed to say. I've lived things. No gamer was supposed to live. You encounter some stuff that is not even funny. Number one. El número uno. Carkey.